If you guys are anything like me, where you live up in the north and you've invested a few thousand dollars into a panoptic system that just sits on your boat in storage for six or seven months throughout the year, you're probably gonna wanna keep watching this video. I'm gonna show you today how for about 30 bucks with some basic parts you can pick up at a hardware store, we can make a panoptics ice fishing kit. Now Garmin did come out with an ice fishing kit for the panoptic system this year and uh, it's really nice actually. Um, it's got a, a nice uh, case that will hold the a larger size battery, hold your panoptics and ice transducer and uh, then just a, a mechanism to allow you to rotate the panoptics transducer in your ice hole. And if you don't want to spend all that money on it, here's what you need to build one yourself. You need a cutting board here. Um, this is just a standard cutting board you get uh, chopping vegetables on. It's 11 by 17, this particular one. Um, then we need some three quarter inch piping connectors. So these are just some couplers. You need a 90 degree elbow. You need one with uh, female threads and then two with male threads. Gonna get some glue to glue it all together. And then finally, you just need some of your three quarter inch pipe. One other thing you should do is get a blank memory card as well, download the latest upgrade. And we're gonna show you how to do that at the end of the video. So I'm gonna get everything out of the box just to show you what we're gonna need. And uh, we'll start putting this together. These are the parts we're gonna to need to pull off of the boat. Now, if you didn't install it yourself and kind of wondering how it all goes together, I do have an install video on how to install this on your boat. So it's basically just the reverse procedure of that. So check out the description for that link. Uh, what it is is our bracket, our knobs, power cable, and display head, panoptics transducer, and then mounting hardware. And you wanna make sure you use the shaft mount, not the barrel mount. So this one here is the shaft mount. You can see it'll fit that three quarter inch PVC piping that we have perfectly. So this is kind of my plan with this. Um, what we need to really do is just get a place to mount the unit. So uh, this board's big enough. I'm going to mount it right to the board. Okay, and then what we would do is just cut out this pattern here to allow our uh, ice hole to go here, transducer to go down the hole. Now this pattern here is uh, going to work for you if you just want it on its own too. You don't want to mount the unit to it if you have it mounted on like a sled or ATV or in an ice hut. Um, you can just go ahead and cut out a pattern similar to this. A couple things I'm going to do is I'm not going to, you know, obviously cut this end of it. I am just want this pattern here. Um, I'm also going to extend this out a little bit just to center it in the hole a little bit better. A couple things to think of is your width here. You know, if you're going to be drawing, doing a, a 10 inch hole, you're going to want to make sure that this will span over the hole um, rather than, you know, making it eight inches and having a 10 inch hole. If you're, you're obviously using a smaller hole with a smaller auger, it's not going to be as big a deal. So I've gone ahead and just cut that out. I'm just gonna trace it out with a marker next and then cut it out with a jigsaw. I've also marked a couple holes here. I'm only gonna use two. That's all I'll need to hold the bracket in place. So I'm gonna drill those out as well. Okay, so I'll be the first to admit it's not the prettiest, but it looks pretty functional. It should do the job. So I got those holes drilled on this side here. I countersunk them. Okay, so after this, next thing you gotta do is a one and eighth inch hole in the center here to allow our rod that's gonna hold the panoptics transducer to pass through. I think what I would recommend is you leave this quite a bit larger um, the next time. If, if I were to do this again, I would definitely leave that larger. I got maybe, maybe two inches there. I think I would do about three or four inches just because when I drill this hole now, you can see there's not gonna be much meat on either side. With your jigsaw there, just a standard wood blade, it'll end up giving you a really nice smooth cut into this material. So we got that hole drilled in there now and you can kind of see what I mean about having a little bit more meat on either side there. It'd be a little bit better if I did it that way. So just something when you're doing this, you might want to keep that in mind. So next thing we'll do is cut our pipe. I've just uh, made a few marks as to where I want those and I'll explain that a little bit further. Um, this is a 15 inch section for our upper shaft, a four inch section for our handle and then the lower shaft here. I'm actually going to make two and I'll show you how that's going to go together. This one here is going to be 16 inches and then my last one there is going to be 36 inches. That's just going to be dependent on the ice thickness which one I use. So I've got those cuts made. These things don't need to be very accurate, um, just approximate is okay. The next cut we're going to do is going to need to be accurate. So here's what the upper shaft is going to look like. We're going to have a handle with that going down to here. We're going to put a coupler on here and then another coupler like this and then the board will be in between these two couplers. So we do need a piece of pipe to go in between there. And uh, that's where it needs to be cut a little bit more accurate because we want to have that nice and tight fitting. So 
Your pipe goes in here about an inch. So you're gonna add two inches because you have two couplers to the thickness of your board, which is half inch. So I'm gonna need to make a cut at two and a half inches. So my original plan was to do this, was to actually use these couplers, which would permanently leave the upper shaft on. So it would be through like this and we'd have the shaft run up there, but that's gonna make storage a little bit of a pain and like transport a bit of a pain. So what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna use two threaded connections so from there, what I'll be able to do is on my top rod and bottom rod, I'll be able to use one of these female threads in order to allow that to connect up. So I can remove it, remove the bottom and remove the top and then just store it a lot easier. Okay, so I've got that lower section glued on. I'm just gonna glue this upper section on and just make sure those are on there nice and tight, but not tight enough that they don't spin. So now I'm going to take my 90 degree connector with my um, upper shaft here. I've got the female thread on there already. So I'm going to go ahead and insert that in there. Then I'll take my upper handle portion and put that there. Another thing you can do too is on the other end of this, um, you can put a cap on it. Uh, that's you know kind of personal preference. If you, I just couldn't find one. So you'll see how that'll spin there. So now this is my upper handle. I've got two lower shafts. I've got two different sizes just because we deal with a lot of different ice thicknesses. So you can make these kind of whatever works for you. I'm gonna use this one for early ice and then this one for later ice. And just be nicer so I don't have to carry something like this around if I'm walking out. Okay, so unfortunately my mic cut out um, for the rest of this video. So I'm just gonna be dubbing this over. So hopefully I'll try and make some sense here for you of what the video is, is going on about. Um, so you can kind of see everything's put together here. I've got my two power cords, uh, power cord for the unit and then Panoptics power cord, which is also an ethernet cable. And that's the upper shaft in place. You can see how that'll spin around. I'm gonna take the lower shaft. Now in the, this case, I didn't have the proper threaded connection. So I just uh, loose fit that on there just so you can get an idea of how this works. So that will go on like so, and then we'll take our Panoptics transducer and that will mount down on the bottom right there. Okay, so there's your Panoptics transducer mounted on there just using that trolling motor shaft mount. Now, one thing you wanna be able to do is mount this very low because you wanna be able to rotate your transducer. Uh, the particular one I have is a PS21, which is only the front view. So I, I don't have the live view down, but on a PS22, you can rotate your transducer down and then get the live view down and live view forward when it's more in this position. Now, another thing you're gonna to wanna to consider when you zip tie your cable to the shaft is just leaving a little extra slack in there and also putting caps, I mentioned that already in there, but uh, there as well, especially just to help water not get in there. Okay, so that's the completed package there. You can see the upper shaft, lower shaft, transducer mounted on. I just taped that lower shaft on because like I said, I didn't have the proper connection. Um, so that's basically it. You can see the transducer will be able to be spun by that handle. Um, I also made it so it's shooting the, um, I guess 180 degrees to the handle. So you'll know which direction it's faced it, facing based on the handle position. So that's something to keep in mind. And just wanna make sure you got enough slack in your cables to allow it to spin 365 degrees. I just uh, put them on with zip ties there, but it'll still spin freely. No problem with that little uh, loop there. I'm just gonna mount these cables up and uh, put the, both power cords together for my pan optics and for my power to the unit. So when it comes to batteries for this, you're gonna to wanna to get a big one. Uh, standard ice fishing battery is a seven amp hour. There's nine amp hour versions as well. I'm gonna recommend at least a 14 amp hour. Um, seven amp hour, you probably get a couple hours use out of 14 amp hour, which you can see is a lot bigger. Hopefully we'll double that. Hopefully get about six hours use out of this. So I've got this ammo box that this battery fits in quite nicely. I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna get this trailer connector here, just cut it in half and have it come out to make a quick disconnect. I'm just gonna solder these together like I've done here. And they'll just connect up our uh, power for both the unit and for the pan optics. Again, you're gonna have two power cords, two positives, two negatives, and you can just put them into one wire going into this trailer connector. Now this grommet here, that actually comes with the 7,600 unit. So if you didn't use it on your boat, it's a good time to use it. You can just cut that hole. I think it was a, a one and a half inch hole, if I'm not mistaken. Hook up your power inside the box there, and then you can use your trailer connector there to connect up your unit when you're ready to go. Okay, so I got the unit powered up now. Just gonna hit, I agree there go into our home screen, we can go to live view forward, and in this case, the PS21, that's the view I have. You'll also get live view down, like I mentioned on the PS22. Um, so that's the setup. As you can see, that's basically what it's gonna look like in your hole. Um, you know, that's how it's gonna spin around, rotate, 
And uh, that's basically the, the setup here. Now, one more important thing that you really need to make sure you do is get the software up to date. Your Panoptics transducer and your unit need to be powered up for this. So I've got the software downloaded. I'm gonna insert the memory card into the unit now. You can just download it from Garmin's website and uh, it's gonna prompt you what you wanna do at this point. And you can just select update software. Sure you want to, you gotta make sure everything's powered up, yes. And then we can go ahead. And those are the current versions as of right now. So I do need to update because there are newer versions. All right, so there you go. That is a DIY Panoptics ice fishing kit that you can make for about 30 bucks in the, uh, the mount. Another battery, uh, maybe 50 bucks there and a case and some other parts. Probably do this all for under $100. So um, hopefully this helped you out if you got Panoptics and you wanna use it throughout the, uh, the winter. This is a great way to do it. So looking forward to trying this out on the ice. So subscribe to the channel, guys. I'm gonna have some videos ice fishing with this just to show you how to use it out on the ice this year. Take a look at all the other Panoptics videos on the channel.